but, but what I want you to see here tonight, what I want you to understand is what caused them not to sway from, from what he was just about to go through. What caused him to look at it the way he looked at it? And, and, and I want to tell you, I want to tell you tonight that you and I can be in the same position he is if we make Jesus Christ the center of our lives. If we make him everything to our lives, we can have the same same thing happen to us. All right? He, his heart, his mind, he was sold out. He, he wasn't for sale. He was sold out. Is there anybody home? He was totally sold out. R read this with me. This is him talking as he's writing this letter to Timothy and he says, for I am re already about to be sacrificed. Can you imagine? He says, I'm about ready to be sacrificed. My life is about to be poured out as a drink offering. The time of my spirit's release from the body is at hand and I will soon go free. I mean, he's writing it knowing what he's going through yet his faith his love his dedication his commitment everything about him is solid there's no wavering in it there, there's no there's no 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 way to make bail he's not calling the disciples up to bail him out is there anybody home? Look at this. He, he's, he's talking, but he's never wavered in his commitment to Christ, his love, his dedication. He sold out. He's steadfast. He's immovable. Look around you and, and, and find, look, look around you and look and you'll find people that, that, that want to be like Paul, but sometimes they're just movable. Sometimes the, the smallest things in life move us. They, ju they, just, they just take a hold of us. And, and I want to I want to say something to you. I I, I believe with all my heart that uh, sometimes it's because there's an area of our life sometimes that we really haven't given up. There, there's just something uh, about us that that just hangs on to something, whatever it may be, that keeps us from really. <laughs> from really selling out to Jesus, from giving it all. Anybody home? But look at verse 7. Look at verse 7, what he says. He says, I have fought the good. He didn't look at it like a bad thing, but he looked at it like a good thing. Paul looked at it like this. If I die, I'm going to heaven. If they leave me here, I'm going to give the devil hell. Yes. So look at this. I have fought the good, worthy, honorable, and noble fight. I have finished the race. I have kept firmly held. Imagine. He's, saying, he's talking to you and I. He says, I have kept firmly held the faith. I, did, I never let it go. I never let it go. I never released it. I never let anything, no matter how hard it was, to take it from me. No matter what I had to face in life, I didn't let it take it from me. Is there anybody with me? 
So, so look at this. Look at this. It, 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 I don't know about you, it blows my mind. I want to be like Paul. Don't you want to be like Paul? Don't you want to be the kind of person that no matter what happens, you're not going to waver and quit and doubt God and, and, and sometimes even blame God and, and blame the brother and the sister and, and come on. And allow all the little things that, that we hang on to that, that bother us, that just make us sway. I, I like this. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. Look what he's talking about. Look what he's saying. As to what remains henceforth, he says, once I'm gone, there's laid up for me the victors, not the losers, but the victors crown. The, the, the winners. Say the winners crown. Not, not the losers crown. But the victor's crown of righteousness. Now look at this. What, what, what is he talking about? Look what he's saying. For being right with God and doing right. For being right with God and being right. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say that again. For being right with God and doing right, doing what's right, living what's right. Is there anybody home? Now, you know, that's the, that's the start. That's just the start of, 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 of getting yourself in a place where, where you can sell out. You got to sell out to Jesus, church. Listen, listen to me. We're not social service. This is a church. Jesus. All I have is Jesus. If you want Jesus, I'll give you Jesus. If you need a car, go see Freddie over there. Lift up your hand, Freddie. Maybe they'll buy a car from you. I, I, I mean, listen, listen, listen. We're, we're so caught up, listen to me, the, the body, and I'm not saying you specifically, because only you know what you're caught up into. But, but we're so caught up on natural things and a natural mind that we can't sell out. The natural things, hear me today, the natural things have taken preeminence over the spiritual things. And for the Christian, listen to me, for the world that doesn't know Christ, that's the way they live. That's, that's just the way it is for them because that's what they live. All right? When I was lost in the world, that's what I lived. I lived in the world. That was first for me. All right? Are you with me? But, but when you're born again, when you know Christ, Jesus has to be taken Present, permanence, residence. He's got to be number one. Come on, say, he's got to be number one. You, you can't be number one. You got to come down to number two or maybe even to the bottom of the line. How many, how many understand what I'm talking to you about? I mean, there's so many things that, that sidetrack us quickly. I mean, uh, we, you know, we, 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 we say, well, you know, I, I love God, man, I'm going to serve God. And all, but then something happens and boom. And I was like, what happened? I don't know. Out of nowhere. Is there anybody here tonight? Yeah. Somebody, t uh, somebody asked me the other day, what's wrong with us today? I said, I don't know, I think maybe they broke the mold. I said, they just don't make men and women the way they used to. When people got saved years ago, they got saved. Come on, they got saved. They sold out. Come on, is there anybody here? 
They were trying, they were trying to hang on to stuff. They, they got saved. Anybody here? Now, people say they got saved. And you go tell them, listen, brother, you can't live like that. Don't tell me what to do. Oh, brother, I said, man, this, this brother here is in trouble. Look at this. Look at this. Look what he's saying. As to, as to what remains, henceforth there is laid up for me the victor's crown of righteousness for being right with God and doing right, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me and recompense me on that great day. But look at what he's saying here. And not to me only. In other words, he's saying, you and me too. Come on, if you and I can, can get what Paul had. He, he, listen, he, Paul, Paul wasn't great because he was that type of a man, you know, that he, you know, Paul was just a short man, shorter than me. He was a short guy. He was great because of his relationship with Jesus. Give the Lord praise if you're going to give it to him. He was great because of his relationship with Christ. Are, are you with me? So look at this. And not to me only, but also to all those who have loved and yearned for and welcome his appearing, his return. How many, how many can say, man, I wish the Lord would hurry, right? I would, if he'd come right now, I'm ready. Now, don't just yell it because you're in church. Amen. Amen. So look at this. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Look what he says to us, to you and I. We read it this morning. Listen, if I can just take two or three of you with me in the rapture, I'll, I'm happy. I wish the whole church would want to go. I wish the whole church would really desire to be there. Are you with me tonight? I, I wish the whole church would say, man, I want to I make it. I'm, I'm going to sell out to Jesus. Look, look at this. Fight the good fight of faith. He, who's he talking to? talking to Timothy and to us. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Listen, why is he saying fight the good fight of faith? Listen, there's opposition. There's never a fight without an opposition. There's got to be an opponent on the other side that's opposing you, hindering you, stopping you, trying to keep you from making it. Is there anybody here? And he's saying, don't just stand there and lay back. Don't just, you know, kick back and, well, you know, all right. No, look at this. He said, fight the good fight of, of the faith. Fight. He said, don't just sit there in your lazy, but your spiritual lazy chair. He says, get up from there and fight. Man. We're in a war. Look at this. We're in a war. We're in a battle here. Is there anybody here tonight? The devil is trying to take you down. And if he can take you down, he's going to take your family down. Do you, do you understand that tonight? We're living in days that are beyond our imagination already. Things are happening that you and I never dreamt would happen in this nation. Come on, don't you look at me like that. You know it's true. I mean, my God, when, when I saw those bombings on TV in Boston, and I saw the ones that did that, I said to myself, anybody could be doing it. I mean, any, your neighbor that helped you carry your groceries. Yeah. 
that not, listen, people are heavy duty, man. I bought a necklace one time that they said was 18 karat gold and a little old lady in a hospital, she lied to me. I said, is this really 18 karat gold? She said, yeah. I said, how much? 20 bucks. Said, 20 bucks. I said, I'll take it, I says. I put it on and everybody was laughing at me. I said, why are they laughing at me? I went in the restroom and my neck was green. My neck was green. And I said, that old lady lied to me. She took me for 20 bucks. She so said, anybody can do anything. Are you with me, church? I said, are you with me? So, so look at this. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of what? Of the eternal life to which you were summoned. He says, take hold of eternal life. You know, that, 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 that eternal life started when, 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 when you were born again. Started right here. But we're still not up there. You, still, you and I still got to make it all the way. We still got to go up there. Say, go up there. Okay, look at this. And for which you confess the good confession of faith before many witnesses. Now, go back with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 10. Because look at Paul is writing all this. He's saying all this about what's going to, you know, his, his powerful steadfastness. But then look at this. One of his soldiers, one of his, one of his church members, you know, one of his disciples, one of, the, one of his spiritual sons, look at this. For Demas has deserted me. For the love of this present world. For the love of this present world. Anybody home? I said, for the love of this present world. He, he, he couldn't let go. He was walking with Timothy, and who knows what else he did with Timothy, and for how long he did uh, with, with, with Paul. He, he, he walked with Paul, he ministered, he did all kinds of things, but... But for some reason, there was something inside of this man that he hadn't sold out. He hadn't let go of something in his life. And he, when, when, the, when the time came, when he saw what Paul was going to go through, listen to me, when he saw what Paul was facing, he said, forget it. And he walked away. That was his testimony. That was his testimony. Can you imagine, everywhere he went, they, they knew him as the deserter. What happened, to, what happened to Demas? Hear me, hear me tonight. It's easy for you and I to say, I love God. It's easy to say it in front of everybody. But it's harder to live it. It's not as easy to live it. It's easy to say it. Come on. It's easy to say it, but you've got to do it. Love is an action word. Come on, love is an action word. Love is not, love is not just a mouth. Love is an action word. It's just, like, it's just like this young lady right here, if this young man right here, oh, you know, just tells her every day for the next three, four months, I love you, I love you, I love you, but he never brings any money home. Never, never pays the bills. Never, never, not even a piece of chocolate. <laughs> you draw the line of the chocolate? Imagine, imagine this. After a while, she's going to get tired of that. I love you, I love you. But where's the action behind this? Anybody home? Where, where's the action? I want to know where the action is. A anybody can say, I love the Lord. 
But can you live that? Through a commitment. Through a, through, through, through a dedication. Can, can you turn away, listen to me, can you turn away from sin for the love of Jesus? Can you walk away from what's wrong for the love of Jesus? I, I just I just finished talking to Chris Clock a little while ago. He's been giving my sister in law revival. They've been going for two weeks over there. And he said he said, Pastor, I might be done tomorrow uh, or today with a revival. And he says, I got two weeks open. He says, uh, pray that the Lord will open a door. And I said, well, after tonight's message, I said, I might need you to come for at least three or four days. I, I, I told a young lady, listen to me. Listen. I told a young lady yesterday. I want you to hear me, because things have changed dramatically. The, the, the Word of God never changes. Aren't you glad that Jesus never changes? How many are glad He never changes? Okay, he, he never, never changes. All right, and I thank the Lord for that. Okay, but, but listen to me. But, but things change in life, and it doesn't really mean that it's God changing. All right? So, so I was talking to a young lady yesterday, and, 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 and look, look, look at the world. This, I mean, this is heavy. She's sitting in, a, in, a, in, in my office, and she's saying this. She's saying, well, I have a choice. I have a choice between my, my kid's dad or somebody else. Oh, don't, don't say, oh, no, listen, listen to me. It, it can happen to any of us. I mean, I mean, listen, you, we got we to gotta love Jesus. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, the other one's more, the other one ha has had a job for a long time, and, and, and I could uh, be supported, but my, my, my kid's dad, he don't work, he's in and out of jail, but, you know, I don't know if I'm going to hang in there or, but I said this, I said this, but let me tell you something. And this is what I want you to get. I says, if you want God to bless you, I said, you can't live with him. Let me come on this side. This side is mad at me. I said, if you want God to bless you. You can't live with that man. You, you, can't, you can't do that. Is there anybody home? I said, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, church. The reason that, that the body is, is so indecisive on selling out with Christ is because, listen, listen, they can't love him because with a true heart, be, because they, 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 they want to hang on to so much and still claim Christ. But look at this. Hear me. I said, to, I said to him, you know, Jesus will never bless sin. That's true. Look, look, look at your neighbor and tell him uh, he's right. He's right. Even though we don't want to admit it. He's right. And so, so, and so, I, so I'm going to say this to you. If you're just, if you're just hooking up together, if you're just acting like you're married, why don't you just get married? And if you don't want to marry the girl, or if she doesn't want to marry you, walk away. Anybody home? Is there anybody here? But, but, but it goes, it goes, it goes further than that. It goes further. I had another gentleman came into our office one day. Uh, they were legalizing marijuana. And, and he opened dispensaries. He had about four or five open and, and was making $80,000 a week. That's the devil. 
And, 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 and Dick this, he said, well, why is it a sin? He said, they legalized it. I said, all it is is legalized sin. God never legalized it. Come on, give him praise. So, so imagine what he's saying here. Uh, let him take that scripture back up there. Look at this. For Demas has deserted me for what? For love of this present world. Listen, you can't love the world and love Jesus. Listen to me. Let me say it again. You cannot love the world and love Jesus. You cannot. It's, it's, it's not possible. You can say you love him, but the action behind it is what speaks. The, the action behind it. Say the action. Behind it is what speaks. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be a blessed individual. I would rather live a blessed life. Say, I would rather live a blessed life. All right? Are you with me, church? So he's talking about fighting, fighting that fight of faith. Go back to verse, verse uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 12. Look, look what it says. Fight the good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. There's going to be a lot of things coming to try to take you down. Listen to me. If he can't get you through trials and problems and circumstances, he'll try with other things. He'll try, he'll try to spiritualize sin. He'll try to make sin look spiritual. But it's not spiritual. Come on, are you with me, church? It, it's, it's destroying. Look at this. Fight the good fight of faith. Look at your neighbor and tell him, come on, it's time to get up. It's time to fight this thing. It's time to be real. Say, it's time to be dedicated, committed to the Lord. How many really want to make it to heaven? Now, let me ask that question. How many really want to make it to heaven? Then, then the only way we're going to make it is by doing it God's way. You and I can't do it our way. We've got to do it God's way. We're going to have to walk God's way. We're going to have to love God. Because there's going to be so many things coming against you and me. And if he can't get you through problems and trials and disasters, he's going to go at you through other things, through sin and temptation. And, and I mean, he's going to hit you with all kinds of things. Is there anybody home today? Come on. And, and you, the only thing, listen to me, the only thing that's stronger than temptation is loving God with a real heart. You, you're going to have to, you're going to have, when you love God for reals, listen, you turn things down. When, when you love God for reals, you'll turn things down. Say, I'll turn things down. You, you, won't, you won't hang on to them. You, they'll be a part of your past. They're not going to be a part of your future. They're going to be a part of your past because the future that God has for you has not, none of those things attached to it. Yeah. Praise God. Give Him praise. Oh, give Him a big praise. Yeah. We're heading home. Listen to me, man. The other day when I saw what happened, I want to tell you. I want to tell you tonight, man. I, I saw people on them sidewalks praying, crying out to God. Are you with me, church? You don't know what can happen. I don't know what can happen. We don't know what can go on in this, in this city, your city, wherever you're from, your neighborhood. We don't know. Is there anybody here tonight? I mean, brother, anything can take place. But are you really committed and walking and living for Jesus Christ? That's what it takes. Give it praise. Go with me to the book of Mark. 
the book of Mark. We're in the last hour, church. This is the last hour. We're in the last days. We're not waiting for them. We're not expecting them to come. And I want to tell you something. Look up here at me for a moment. The rapture is going to happen. Jesus is coming in the clouds. The angel is going to blow that, that, that shafar or that trumpet, whatever they want to call it. And the dead in Christ are going to disappear. They're going to rise out of the grave and leave. And then us, if we're ready, if we're, if we're really there, we're going to make it to heaven. We're going to disappear in a twinkling of an eye. We're going. We're going. Hallelujah. How many want to go with Jesus? I, I look at things, man. You know, you might think I'm old-fashioned. That's all right. Uh, it doesn't bother me if you think that. But I want to tell you something, man. I, I sit down sometimes at my house, and then I'm sitting there thinking, and I say, wow, man, how can these people think like that, man? They're backwards. We're, we're thinking totally reverse. It, listen, even as a sinner, I never thought like that. Man, I was logical at least. Anybody here? I, I, I knew a guy that, that, that served the Lord. He actually served the Lord for about 12 years. And then he blew it, man, and started messing around with some of the lady. He was saved. He, 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 well, he said he was saved, and he, he had a, a beautiful wife and children and everything. And then by the time he knew it, he, he's hooked up with his girl. And, and I told him, brother, you can't do that, man. You've got to get back to your wife. You can't be doing all that stuff. And he says, well, can I have them both? <laughs> Imagine the, the mentality. Right now in this country, they want to start teaching four-year-olds, kindergarten, four-year-olds to six-year-olds pornography. That, that's the world we're living in. How many know we got to save our children, our grandchildren? Amen. Come on. And the only way you're going to do it is to live right for the Lord, man. Come on. You can't, you can't, listen, you can't be doing one thing, man. They're telling your child you can't do that. They're going to look at you and tell you, man, what you talking about, Willis? Come on, anybody here? Look at this, Mark. Mark. Chapter 13 from verse 28 to 37. Look what he says here. He says, remember, we're fighting the good fight of faith. All right? So, so imagine we're fighting that fight of faith. What do I do to fight this fight of faith? First of all, I get right with God. I make sure my heart is right with the Lord. And listen, and I commit myself, I dedicate my life to God. Yeah. I see people get saved every day all over the place, but they never commit or dedicate. And because they don't do that, they don't let go. They hang on. Anybody here? So look at this. Look at this. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. We know the fig tree is this wrath. All right? Learn a lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its branches become tender and it puts forth its leaves, you recognize and know that summer is near. Well, things have changed, man. I looked out there the other day and I saw those little buds and all the trees, man. I said, wow, check this out, man. Spring's here. Hey, man, the little creature came out already and told us it was here and three days later three days later snow look at the next verse so also when you see these things happening you may recognize and know that he is near Jesus is near look at this the, the Word of God says, the Word of God says, I want to read, I want them to stay right there where they're at in that, in, in, in that uh, 
place right there, but I want to go right here with you. I want to go to Matthew. I'm going to Matthew. Don't you change that up there. I'm going to read it to them. Matthew 24. I, I, I want to read this. Look at this. These are some of the signs that are, that are happening in our hour, in our time. And, and the enemy is using these things to take down the people of God. Look what it says. He says in verse 3, he says, While he was seated, and I'm just going to read it to you, then I'm going back to Mark. He said, While he was seated on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will this take place, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the completion or the consummation of the age? He's asking, when is going to be the end of this thing? So look at this. And Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. Write this down. The number one, the number one weapon that the enemy uses is deception. Deception. See, if you're not dedicated and committed to Jesus, then, then, then when they offer you sin and, and, and salvation on top, of, on top of sin, it's going to be a lot more appealing to you because we want to satisfy the flesh. Anybody home? So look at this. And Jesus answered them, be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you, and leading you into error. For many will come in on the strength of my name, appropriating the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened or troubled, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. I mean, check it out. Look at North Korea. They, they don't care if they die. Because that's what's going to happen. Look at Syria killing, killing over, over 50,000, I think it's already up to about 80,000 people of his own people in Syria. How do you kill 80,000 Syrians just to kill them? In Mexico, they were saying yesterday that there's been over 70,000 or 80,000 people killed in Mexico. In Juarez alone, they had 50,000 people dead. We're in, we're, we're in a war, church. We're, we're, we're right back in the middle of the end of this. The dispensation of grace is about to end. We're about to see Jesus for real. Hello. We're about to see him face to face. Oh, come on, give him praise. You're acting like you don't want, you don't want to see him. Come on. I mean, he talks here and he says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in places and place after place. All this is because the beginning of the early pains of birth pangs, of the intolerable anguish. He says, all these things happening. And then, oh, let me let me go on with this part right here. Look at this. Go with me to verse eleven, to verse thirteen. And look, look what he says here. This this is heavy duty. Don't you think it's heavy duty? I mean, you're seeing that. How many of you watch the news? Listen, you're seeing that in living color. You're seeing the Bible right there. You're seeing that in living color. Look, 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 at, look at verse, verse 11, verse 11, 12, and 13. Look what it says. I, I, I want you to stay on Mark. Go to Mark. 
Go to Mark. Stay back. Stay where I had you. Verse 28 or 29. Okay, thank you. I'll read it here. Look at this. And many false prophets, so when they talk about prophets in, in, the, in the New Testament, they're talking about preachers. Are you with me? Okay. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive and lead many into error. Give them a false teaching. Okay. Something that feels good. Something that's watered down. It's not too hard. I don't have to give up anything and I can still say I'm saved. But that's not what makes you saved. How many know that a, a human being cannot save you? Yeah. Only Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, so look at this. So look at this. And the love of the great body of people, the love of the... Who, who's he talking about? He's talking about the church. And the love... Of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied lawlessness and iniquity. You know what lawlessness is? Don't have any rule. They, 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 they got no, no one tells them what to do. In, in a few years back, when they were trying to pass that same sex marriage in, in San Francisco, they. they, they they interviewed a, a, a gay person there, and they, they asked them, aren't you afraid that you are breaking the federal law of the United States of America? And they said, we have no law. We are lawless. Now, they're smoking dope all over, lawless. Come on. Are you with me? Now, listen to me, now they're promoting, they're promoting not, not getting married, but just checking it out, just testing the water before you even think of anything. They're promoting it, I'm telling you. They're breaking up the family. A woman on MSNBC, that's a, the newscaster there on MSNBC, she said in her, in her commercials, she said, your children no longer are yours. But they're, they belong to the community and the government. Is there anybody here? So it says with me, Jesus, Jesus is, about is about to come. And, 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 and we see so many that, that they're, they're, they're at ease. They're just kicking back, you know, just, just taking, you know, real nonchalant, you know, just... Well, you know, praise the Lord, I guess, you know. And, and ah, oh, brother. Their, their interest, listen to me, their interest is more in the world and the pleasures of this world than it is on Christ. On, 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 on having a relationship with Christ. On, on, on seeking God. On, you, you talk to people today. Listen, I, I'm a pastor. I talk to people all over. You talk to them today about seeking the Lord, and they look at you like you're an alien. Uh, anybody here? We're, we're, about to, we're about to see the greatest event the world has ever, will ever experience. And we still got to fall in love with God. We, we got to love him more than we love ourselves. I told a couple today, I said, man, before you can love each other the way you're supposed to, you got to love God more. Amen. Yeah, give him praise. And, and I know, and I know church, I know church that sometimes this type of a message is not appealing. But let me tell you something. I'd rather see you make it to heaven. It doesn't matter about me. It doesn't matter about me. I'd rather see you make it all the way to heaven than, than, than to be playing. Come on, than to be just playing games with God. Come on. So, so, so look what he says here in Mark. I mean, he's talking here. He's talking here. Now look at this about the love of, of the body growing cold. 
why does it grow cold? Because they become lawless. They, they start taking on stuff into their own life that, that they should never have taken in there. They become like Demas. Can you imagine walking with Paul, walking with Paul, amen, through all kinds of journeys and preaching and seeing people healed and delivered and, and miracles and, 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 and all kinds of things, man. And then when they, it comes down to the nitty-gritty, man, and he sees Paul getting arrested and they're beating him up, man, and they say, man, we're going to kill you this time. Paul, Demas says, oh, man, this is too much. I ain't going to go that far, man. I'm, I'm, go I'm getting out of here, man. I'm, I'm going back to the world. That's what he did. And the Bible says it, says that he loved the world. That's why he left. See, he, he never detached, say detached. He never detached himself from the world or the things of the world. He never detached himself. He hung on to the world, you know, and, and he was trying to serve the Lord. And then, you know, and... and and look, how many Christians do you know? Not, 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 not none of you. you. All of you are perfect. But I'm talking about others outside of here. You know, uh, the other church down the street, uh, I'm talking about them. You know, how many uh, Christians do you know and outside of here that one, one moment they're all, man, yeah, praise God, man, the Lord bless me, man, man, praise the Lord, man. And then the next week you look at it, man, and they're over there mingling in the world. Man, come, on. <laughs> come on, is there anybody here? Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you out of love, and I'm telling you straight up, man, you cannot live that kind of a Christian life because you'll miss heaven. So, so look what he says here. Look what he says here. Look what he says here in Mark. So also when you see these things, when you see these things, happening when you see them happening i asked you a question a while ago how many of you watch the news my god i can't believe these things are happening in our country but they're happening look at this when you see these things happening when you turn on the television and you find some guy, some crazy guy, walk into a theater and start shooting everybody down, listen, you're seeing those things. Is there anybody home? You're, you're seeing those things. Are you with me? When you see these things happening, he says, you may recognize and know. He says, no. Say it with me. No. no. Know what? That Jesus is near at the very door. He's about to come. He's about to show up. Are you with me? He's about to show up. Amen. Say, Jesus is about to show up. Go to the next verse. Surely I say to you, this generation, say this generation. Right here, this generation. This, we're in it. There's nothing you and I can do to get out of it. Surely I say to you, this generation, the whole multitude of people living at that one time. Us. Every one of us. Say, positively will not perish. Listen to me positively will not perish or pass away before all these things take place. I believe I'm going to see the rapture. I believe it. I believe I am. I, I believe I'm going to experience getting beamed up in a twinkling of an eye. How many understand that? In a twinkling of an eye. I believe it. I believe we could be right here worshiping, singing something, and all of a sudden, phew, millions, millions of people in the twinkling of an eye will disappear from the face of the earth. Millions. Okay, millions. 
Now look at this. Heaven and earth will perish and pass away. Jesus is saying, but my words, what he said, what he wrote, he said, my words will not perish or pass away. Everything that's been written will happen. Everything will take place. I don't care what preacher tells you no. I don't care if they tell you it's okay to do certain things. I don't care what they say. It will happen. It, come on, are you with me? It's going to take place. So look at this. But of that day or that hour, not a single person knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. No one knows what is going to happen, but it's going to happen. It's coming. Say it's coming. We're in it right now. Let's go on. Be, now look what he says. He gives you instruction. He says, be on your guard, constantly alert, and watch and pray. Amen. Underline those words, watch and pray. I believe Paul had a powerful relationship with God. I believe that Paul prayed. Watch and pray. For you do not know when the time will come. You don't know when the time will happen. It's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. When you and I least expect it, you could be driving to work and... You could be asleep in bed and be gone. Your, your little babies, innocent, that little baby right there, when Jesus comes will be gone in a twinkling of an eye. Are you with me? That little baby right there, in a twinkling of an eye. You the grandparents? If you grandparents aren't ready, listen to me. He'll leave you here, but you'll stay here. Are you with me? I, I said, are you with me? A, a, any of us here, any of us here, if, if you're not ready, if you're not living right for God, You'll miss that, that great event. Be on your guard, constantly alert, and watch and pray, for you do not know when the time will come. What is he saying? Fight the good fight. This is what he's saying. Listen, don't let anything take you. Don't let your friend convince you. Don't, don't let the world, man, don't, let, don't listen to all the false preachers. Come on, Jesus is coming. I said, Jesus is coming. You got to live right. Say, I got to live right. It's like a man already going on a journey when he leaves home. He puts his servant in charge, each with his particular task, and he gives orders to the doorkeeper to be constantly alert and on the watch. Therefore, watch. Look what he says. Watch. He, he, he stresses that. He stresses that. He stresses that. He says, watch, watch, watch. Give strict attention. Be cautious and alert. Be, I mean, give strict attention. It's your life. life. Say, it's my life. life. So look at this. For you do not know when the master of the house is coming in the evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. You don't know when it's going to happen. When all of a sudden you least expect it. Or you're thinking, oh, I don't, I don't believe all that stuff is true anymore. I've been waiting for it. It doesn't happen. All of a sudden it takes place. It'll happen. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It's going to happen. His words will never pass away. They will be fulfilled. Say it with me. They will be fulfilled. Now look at this. Watch. I say, there he goes again. He's saying, he's stressing it. Say, come on, don't, don't, no te duermas. Don't fall asleep. Don't let the world entice you. Don't get so involved in the natural things of life that you ain't got time for the spiritual things. Don't get so involved in everything else out there that you ain't got time for God. 
Don't get so involved, man, that, listen, that all those other things take first place for you. And Jesus takes a second or third because you'll miss it. He has to be first. Come on, he's got to be number one. You've got to love Jesus more than you love your own life. You've got to love Jesus more than you love anything else in this world. Come on, if you're going to give him praise, give him praise. You've got to love Jesus more than anything else in life. When I pray, one of the things I tell the Lord is, Lord, I need you more than I need anything else in life. I need you, Lord. I don't need anything else. Listen to me, church. It, you came in naked, naked you're leaving. I don't care how much you accomplish here. I don't care how much you accumulate here. It's all staying here. The only thing that can go from here to there is your soul. Come on, is there anybody home today? He says, watch, I say, lest he come suddenly and unexpectedly and find you asleep. Find you asleep. But I love God. But spiritual things really don't interest you. See, Jesus is involved in spiritual things. If you're going to have a, a relationship with Christ, you've got to have a spiritual relationship with Christ. Not a natural relationship, but a spiritual relationship. You can't have a natural relationship with the Holy Spirit. you got to have a spiritual relationship with Christ. It's not the world and then Jesus understands no, it's Jesus and let the world try to understand. That, come on, are you with me? That's the way it is. That's the way it is. We get so caught up on so many things. You know, you'd be surprised. You would be surprised, listen to me, how many Christians believe that homosexuality is normal, natural. And it's not. It is an unnatural spirit that's taking control of that mind and heart. Are you with me? We got women in there and men in here. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but we got women in there and men in here who have been involved in homosexuality and they've been delivered. Give the Lord praise! No, church, listen, you, you, you can't have a natural relationship with the Lord. You can't. Some people just think that they have a relationship with God just because they show up to church, but they don't pray, they don't worship, they don't give, they don't do nothing. They just, and then they go home and say, well, I've been to church. No. That's not Christianity. That's not Christianity. Every time you come to church, you ought to be in touch with the Holy Ghost. Every time you come, you ought to, you ought to be at that altar, make, uh, come on, uh, being in touch with the Spirit. You ought to be right there with Jesus. Every time you come, you, you ought to be right there with Him. Be why? Because you're watching. You're not going to be asleep. L listen to me. Listen to me. How do I know some of you are asleep? Because you hate to pray. We had a funeral here yesterday. Of one of the brothers that attended church here, Reno. Uh, somebody knew him. Reno was in the wheelchair. He had a motor, motorized wheelchair. And he'd be the one that from that end of the church to this end, after everybody went up to give their tithe, he'd zoom down in here in, in, with his Amen. wheelchair and he'd put his tithe and his offering. And, and he was in a wheelchair. Amen. Crippled. He was here for prayer. Amen. 
One day I'm driving up Harlan to, towards Mississippi. I'm leaving the church and I'm going home. And, and, I'm, and I look and I think my wife was with me. And, and, and we saw somebody zoom by right in the middle of Mississippi, right in the middle of the road. And we looked and it was a wheelchair. I told my wife, what was that? She said, that was Reno. And, and, and he was going to, he was going, he was going to, to, the, to, the, to the bus stop right on Mississippi and Wadsworth. And I remember telling him, I said, Reno, I said, why don't you just ask for a ride? Why don't you let me get you a ride? We'll put your wheelchair in or whatever. We'll. He says, you can't. My wheelchair won't fit anywhere. Besides, he says, he says, I like to witness to everybody. I, I, I go to the, the bus stop and I give him tracks and I talk to him and... And he'd, he'd, he'd be dropped off on Mississippi and Wadsworth, Julie. In a wheelchair. Cripple. When he talked to you, you could hardly understand him. You'd have to get real close to him. That was an advantage to him. And, and, and he'd witness to people. But he'd be on his way to prayer. At night... He'd be zooming, man, and I'd say, my God, man, I have to follow him sometimes. I'd follow him in my truck. He didn't know I was following him just to make sure he made it. But he was going. And, and, and the, the reason he was doing that is because his, his van broke down, and it cost a lot of money to fix his van. In fact, the state, I think, gave him a new van. And, 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 and he, would, he would come in that, in, that, in that wheelchair. But what I want to say is this. You got two good legs. Yeah. And you got a car. And your family needs Jesus. And you can't find your way down to the church. Because there's other things keeping you, natural things keeping you from the spiritual. Oh, Jesus. Here's Reno. In a wheelchair. See, see the problem with us is that we've already decided how we're going to serve the Lord. How I'm going to love Him. And the enemy is beating you with your family. Don't think demons aren't involved. They're involved there. We're fighting the good fight of faith. We're fighting a spiritual war. We're fighting a spiritual battle. Come on, we're fighting this battle. We're fighting this war. We are. Say, we're fighting. This is a war we're in. We're in this war. I, I can't let my family die and go to hell without Jesus. Man, I got to make sure, I, I got to make sure I'm, I'm right. And I got to make sure my family's going to make it. I, I, I've got to do that. How am I going to do that? I got to fall in love with God. And I've got to commit myself to God. I mean, I got to be devoted to God. I, I got to be dedicated to the Lord. He's got to be more important to me than anything else in life. We're at that moment, church, where things could happen or you could disappear or maybe you could get left. We're at that point. We're in that hour. And you might think that I'm just a crazy preacher yelling at you from here, but let me tell you something. I'm telling you the truth. But I see Reno in that wheelchair coming to prayer, not letting anything stop him. And I say, Lord, what happened to these people? They got good legs. 
vehicles to drive and they won't give you a couple of hours to pray for themselves and their families? Ask yourself, how ready are you? How dedicated, how devoted are you to the Lord? And you might sit there and say, but that's not the only thing that's going to get me to heaven. Well, it's a start. Anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? Listen, I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to prove it to you right now that, that you need to come. You, you need to come and pray. You need to come and, and seek the Lord. You need to pray for your family. You, listen, we're at that hour that anything can happen. I had a kid, 14 years old, when we were on Tennyson, Florida. He was in trouble with the police. He had 40 hours community service. They brought him to me. I knew the mom and dad. The mom and dad weren't really serving the Lord. They believed in God, but they weren't really there. And they asked me, could he do community service here? I said, sure. He had 40 hours. The kids were going to youth camp. And I told him, I said, I said, I said, brother, I says, listen to me. If you go to youth camp, I says, I'll count that, all of youth camp. I'll count it all for your community service. He says, I don't have the money. I says, I'll pay for you. Go to youth camp. So he went, and I went. I took him. And there were some other guys there that had been saved that were, that were ex-gang members and all kinds of stuff, and they began to minister to him. And all week they were on him, ministering to him. And, everything. and finally he gave his life to Christ. Yeah. Finally he broke through and gave his life to Jesus. When we, when we came home, he went to our house, and I called his dad and mom to pick him up. So they came, and I looked at him, and I said, I want to tell you something. I said, your son has given his life to Jesus. I said, I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to ask you to do yourself a favor and do this young man a favor. I said, don't send him to church. You come with him to church. You bring him. Well, they didn't really believe me. He came a few days, a few times. And little by little, we saw him just... He was 14. Four years later, he was embedded in the gangs here. But four years later, I'm doing this funeral. A young man that was destined for heaven has now lost his opportunity. You know why? Because the parents were more caught up on themselves and more caught up on the natural things of life than they were the spiritual things. Anybody home? The spiritual things didn't attract them it didn't attract them the natural things were more appealing to them and I'm burying him and my heart is broken because this young man should have gone to heaven Two hundred, three hundred gang members are at the church. Putting their scarves inside the casket. And I'm seeing that and I said to myself, brother, you're too late. That's not going to help you. He says, you, you can't even go join him and, and stand before the Lord and give a good word for him. 
See, see the apostle Paul knew. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Look at what he says. Fight the good fight of faith and take a hold of eternal life. Life forever, he says. Take a hold of it. Don't lose it. Don't let it go. Because it'll happen. I, I knew another man that was a, a powerful preacher. Him and I traveled together. We traveled together, preached together, we did revivals together. Powerful man. This man, I saw 50, 60 young people lined up like that and every one of them filled with the Holy Ghost at one time. I saw, I saw, I, I saw the Lord use it to, to pray for people and, and they were healed with impossible situations. And one day I called him. I called him up because I was doing what they called Youth Alive for the Assemblies of God. I was, I was promoting Youth Alive in Brighton. And, and I was using their gym there at the high school. They, they loaned it to me. And, and I was getting up to 600 kids from the junior high and the high school. They were coming and their parents started coming. They were wondering what's happening to our kids. Our kids are changing and, and something's going on. So they started coming. So I called him up. I called him up to invite him to come and share his testimony. He had been a, a hardcore heroin addict, done over 18, 20 years in San Quentin. And the Lord set him free, healed him of hepatitis C and everything, healed him. And when, when, I, when I, I hear the phone, the, the voice on this side of the phone, and, I, and I, I hear it, it's his wife, Lupe. And she said, Ray, she said, Richard is no longer with us. And I thought, man, did he die? And she said, no. She said he left with another woman. And she was working, look at this, she was working swing shift to support the family. They had a lot of kids. She was working swing shift to support the family. And, and she would come home from work and he'd be laying with this woman in their bed. And, and he put, now listen to me, I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you right now, if you don't sell out to Jesus, you got to be committed and dedicated with your relationship with God. You're not Superman or Superwoman, church. The only thing that makes you any difference is the Holy Spirit. This, this, this man pressured her, pressured her. Put, he would put pills, all kinds of pills next to her bedside and pressured her, pressured her. He pressured her to take her life. He had a big insurance coming. What can cause that to happen? What caused Demas to walk away from Paul and desert Paul and desert Jesus? What caused that? He loved the world more than Jesus. The world was more appealing than Christ was. Are you with me? See, when you're, when, you're, when you're in love with God, when you're dedicated to God, when you're committed to God, Listen, you can't wait to get into his presence. You, you want to be there with him. You, 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 just, you don't want to separate yourself from that relationship. You want to be there with him. How does a person fall asleep after knowing Jesus? 
How do you lose interest in what belongs to Christ? How do you, how do you make excuses for it? How does that happen? See, the enemy begins to come because somewhere there's something we haven't allowed God to take from us. There's still a part of us that's looking and desiring. Look at this. Are you with me? Go with me to Exodus chapter 33. I'm going to show you a few, a few scriptures and then we're going to pray. Because we, we, got, we got to pray. We, we got to pray, church. How do you stay connected to God and not pray? How can, how can, you, how can you say you're going to make it and not want to pray? Are you with me? So look at this, Exodus chapter 33. Verse 7. For those of you that, that don't think you need to come to church to pray, you do need to come. I, I'm telling you straight out. You do need to be here and pray. Your family needs God. Hello. You can't set them free. Jesus has to set them free. But he's got to use you. Look at this. Verse 7 says, Now Moses used to take his own tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting of God with his own people. And everyone who sought the Lord went out to that temporary tent of meeting which was outside the camp. Can you imagine? They went, they went, they went to that place. He, it was for God's people. Are you with me? Yes. To meet at that place with God. Say, to meet at that place with God. Yes. Okay, go with me. Go with me to Acts. Acts. Acts chapter 3. Look at this. Acts chapter 3. Verse 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Verse 1. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of what? Prayer. Prayer the ninth hour, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. What was Jesus saying? He says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. If you lose that, you, you'll, you'll lose your connection. Look at this. Acts. Are you with me? Chapter 12, verse 5. Look how powerful prayer was. Look at this. And they were gathered together to pray. Now you've got to understand that they didn't have a lot of what you and I have today. They, they'd meet in houses, and but they all gathered. Look at this. So Peter was kept in prison. He was locked up in prison. They wanted to kill him. But fervent prayer for him was persistently made by God made to God by the church. They gathered together in that one place to pray. Amen. Listen, if there's anybody in this church telling you you don't need to come to prayer, listen to me. You bring them to me. Get them by their hair and bring them over here to me. Because they're going to they're gonna cause you to miss it. Right. Are you with me today? Okay, are you with me? So look at that. And the Lord set Peter free. Anybody home? Look at Acts 16, verse 12 and 13. Acts 16, verse 12 and 13. And from there we came to Philippi, which is the chief city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We stayed on in this place some days. And now look at verse 13. He says, And on the Sabbath day we went outside the city gate to the bank of the river, where we suppose, look at this, where we suppose there was an accustomed place of prayer, and we sat down and addressed the women 
who had assembled there. They gathered together. Is there, is there anybody home? I uh, said, so is there anybody home? Jump down in that same chapter with me to verse 25 and 26 so you can see how powerful prayer is. It'll keep you connected. Look at this. But about midnight, remember Paul and Silas were thrown in prison? Look at this. But about midnight, as Paul and Silas were what? Praying. Were what? Praying. Praying and singing hymns of praise to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the very foundations of the prison were shaken and at once all the doors were opened and everyone's shackles were unfastened. What a powerful, that prayer is powerful. I said prayer is powerful. You'll never be involved in anything more powerful than prayer. Nothing. More powerful than anything you'll ever, ever get involved in. Are you here today? Demas. Walked away and never came back. The young man, the young rich ruler that went to Jesus, told Jesus, Jesus, what do I got to do to inherit eternal life? He said, do all of the things, all the commandments. He said, I've, I've kept them all from my youth, from my, since I was a little kid, I've kept them all. And he said, you still lack one thing. He said, go and sell all your goods and give it to the poor and follow me. And he couldn't let go. He was so attached to that one thing. And he walked away from Jesus. Believe me, church, there are people in, in church all across America who have walked away from Christ. They sit in a church, but their hearts are not with him. They're far. I want you to be ready. I want you to stand with me. There's a song that we're going to sing. I want to I I invite you all to come. I want you to stand here. I don't want you to start praying right away. I want you to come. Vente, Jose. Bring your wife with you. Come on down. Venga, said, you might be here tonight and you need the Lord. And if you need the Lord, tug at me. Tug, tug at my, my side. We want to bring you to God. Venga, said, everyone, come. 